Good morning, Storm fans. Brent Cook. Today we are playing in a Legacy Pro Tour qualifier with the Epic Storm version 12.5. I've been playing this decklist a whole bunch over the last few weeks, and it's just been delightful. I know that Alex has also been doing very well with it as well, and we're just really excited to be playing this decklist today. We feel like it's very favored in the metagame, and we're just looking to spike an event. So, yeah, we love version 12.5, and if you're interested in more about 12.5, there's going to be cards in this video today, and you can just click on one of those that will appear above, and it will bring you to a deck tech uh, video that you can watch. So, watch those, but you, if you still have questions afterwards, I'm, ha I'm happy to answer those in the comment section down below. Leave a comment, even if you don't have any questions, help get us into that YouTube algorithm, I would greatly appreciate it. And then I would like to thank two of our newest members here at the Epic Storm, Brandon Adams, who recently did a donation deck on Doomsday. Thank you, Brandon, for your continued support. And then Jacob Wheeler, you've gone above and beyond recently with website orders and, you know, other stuff like tutoring. I highly appreciate both of you. So this is the Epic Storm. We're playing it today. I've already gone over that. What else should I say? Um, Become a member. Yeah, that's a great thing to do. Help support us, get us to that next level. The member button is right next to the subscribe button, so make sure to click on that. We have a bunch of tiers, and it covers things like you get cyborg guides. Uh, I'll help you with your deck list. 50% off donation decks, free donation decks at our top level. But our base level, you get access to our members Discord, so there's secret content in there that you could be getting. I recently wrote a thesis on Popper Storm and my ideas with it moving forward, so definitely go check it out in there. That is the member section of the Discord. Um, yeah, and you also get highlighted user profiles in our Discord. Our Discord is available to everyone. So if you're interested in becoming a part of our Discord, that is in the description below, but the member section is private. So just a warning. Um, yeah, and then I guess I'll do this spiel about the tokens. So we have brand new mini token packs. We've sold a bunch of them already, a whole lot. And if you're interested in these, they are moving quickly, so definitely go check them out. For $13, you get 64 tokens. They're double-sided, so you're really getting 128. You get 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm. 20. That means you can count all the way up to Grape Shot in whatever format you love. A Galvanic Relay Exile Indicator token, 4 Treasure tokens, 4 Strike It Rich, and then 10 Monks for our friends that play Vintage. We love you, Monastery Mentor. Slime time. It's here. Eighth Progenitors. It's taking over every format that it's legal in. It's simply a delight. And we wanted to help you with your tokens. These tokens have the power toughness already built in, which means that you're not fumbling around with dice when you're playing. It's simple and easy. Let's slime time together and let's make it easy for you. And then we have squirrel tokens and goblin tokens for your copies of Chatterstorm and Empty the Warrens. Yeah, squirrels versus goblins. Get them while you can. Yeah, so that's our my spiel. I'm going to keep it kind of short today. Uh, the PTQ is going to start any minute now. So support us. Subscribe, like, comment, whatever. Uh, I got to go. It's going to start. See you in match number one. Hey there. Welcome to round number one. We are on the Plague and Sin. And their goldfish history is just a variety of different things, but their last deck was Omni Tell. I don't necessarily want to put them on Omni, but uh, we'll see what happens. And this hand seems fine. We are lacking a white source for the Orms chant, but we do have draw steps. We also have things like Mox, Opal, whatever. Uh, this hand's definitely. Okay, let's start us off. And I think we just want to go tag a go. Look a little less harmless. Volcanic, okay. And the draw is very good, okay. So they could be on Delver. I don't really want to just slam this uh, Pushclaw Talisman. And if they're on Sneak and Show, I can actually put the Claw into play off of Show and Tell. So I don't really feel pressured to rush this talisman into play. We are still lacking that white source. This is really the first time where I've been like, oh, wow, five colors. But we're still in a decent spot. Okay, are you Delver or are you Show and Tell? Volcanic Island isn't going to do this anyway. Um, but I expect that their main haze likely will. 
Arthur Delver. They revealed these is a card that they can cast this turn. Okay. Our opponent has six cards. Now would be a great time for a white sword. Ding. Let's cast this right. What about a dark red? Okay. If they want to force right of flame, I'd be down. Forms chant targeting you. Searching a merc. Okay. So if this resolves, we just have lethal. Do you have it up on it? So we'll pay for days. All right, so does diamond resolve? A must be the money. Okay, so now we can sacrifice the lion's eye diamond, activate wish claw talisman, and then lethal our opponent with tendrils of agony. How about that? Go get those chicken tendies. Boom. So we're going to start this PTQ off with a game one victory over the format's menace. But we still have two more games to go this round, so let's not get overly confident yet. All right. So we've taken the hard game from Delver. The post board games that I found are actually a little bit easier for us because we have these lovely copies of Galvanic Relay. Let's use those to our advantage. Board out that ad nauseum, and then these ponders. The reason we board out ponder is you really need to keep the mana in your deck. Formerly, we used to board out a lot of like Rite of Flames in this matchup, but Galvanic Relay completely changed that because we want to keep our mana in the deck so that way we can accelerate into Relay, play through days, and then post Relay still have a bunch of mana. You don't want to cast a bunch of your mana into Relay and not be able to do anything after, so keeping your density high is pretty important. A friendly reminder, I am a part of the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, sometimes we do discuss other formats, like in our latest episode, but a lot of what we talk about transcends formats. So it's just overall game theory, what's going on in Magic, etc. Go check us out. I think we're pretty entertaining, and I think that you'll love it. We're available on all major podcast platforms. Okay, game two against Delver. We're on the draw. This is not a keep chip. All right, this is pretty good. Um, wow. What's the actual card to put back here? Uh, I think it's Wishclaw, which is, it, it might seem crazy, but we have these artifacts for Relay, and I don't really want Wishclaw because it plays in a daze. I just want to draw a Lion's Eye Diamond for both of these. There's a channeler. Okay. Brainstorm, decent pickup here. All right, now it's the opponent's turn. I'd love to draw a diamond right now. Dragon Rage trigger. We're going to yield to that so that way I don't have to click OK every time. Then ponder. So they're still deciding on the Dragon Rage trigger. You'll know once this goes away, and then they'll start pondering. So they've decided that Misty is not good enough. They did not shuffle off Ponder. That's interesting because it looks like maybe they don't have a second land drop unless they're playing it post combat, trying to be tricky. They are. Okay. Your tricks did not get me, wizard. Another relay. Not really what we wanted here. I think I might brainstorm on their end stop. Okay, you can have an iteration. They decided they didn't want Ragavan. Interesting. <clears throat> Wasteland. So that is a little bit annoying because it's saying, hey, you're not allowed to brainstorm on the end step now. 
I'm probably going to cast it in the main phase, but we'll see what her draw step is. Pearl Mox, Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Petal, all very welcome. Replicate was stinky. Uh, we're just going to try to resolve this Brainstorm. Really need to convert this hand into something playable here. Okay, Diamond was good. Um, so the question is, do we want to... We can keep the other two cards on top as long as we're willing to sacrifice the pedal for mana, and then we have guaranteed hits off relay, including another relay. So it's really just like, is the trade off on um, fetching versus keeping that extra mana worth it? And we already have a relay in hand. Well, I guess that's the one we're about to cast, actually. Um, I think I want it. I want the cards on top. So if our opponent was sneaky here, they could waste our verdant, forcing us to, you know, not get these two lovely cards. All right, we want a little bit more mana now. Diamond? Uh, right's okay. So that was fine. I'm still a little bit worried about uh, not having enough mana next turn. It is a concern that I have. Uh, they decided again that Ragavan wasn't good enough. That said, once this brainstorm resolves, the Dragon Rage Channeler will become delirious, which means that it will get plus two, plus two, and has to attack every turn. We're going to fall to 14 at the bare minimum. That said, in post-war games, we're not really looking to add nauseum anymore, so our life total, you know, it's not as relevant for our combo, but we still have to stay alive. Okay, and Channel are getting in there now. Okay. A follow-up wasteland was uh, what I was afraid of there. So we can probably live through one waste. Is a Merc Tide. Is. Okay. So it's no longer delirious. So they have seven power. We're likely going to get another turn after this one. I say likely because it's, it's never guaranteed, but um yeah. Alright, mana. Mana. Good job, Deck. And this Lotus Petal will turn on the Opal, which is very nice. Red of Flame. Something we could do is just like try to, <coughs> excuse me, um, resolve this Echo immediately. But I think it's almost free here to play the Wish Claw because we could potentially fight over Echo. All right, so let's see if we can resolve this. So if our opponent has Force, we could activate Wish Claw for Veil of Summer, and then, <coughs> excuse me, then uh, post Echo try to resolve Relay. Switching days. So we can take a guaranteed Galvanic Relay right now for six. Or we can um, try to fight over this Echo. I'd hate to lose to another force, and that's what would happen here. If we decide to fight over um, Echo, we'd lose to another force. So I'm going to let that go and just take a relay for a second. And I think we probably want to get Scrubland here. Okay. So our opponent has seven power. We need to be able to untap and do something meaningful. A lot of lands. Oh, that was not good. Okay. Um, I guess we just have to untap and reevaluate once we see what our draw step is. And the channeler is almost back to delirious. It just needs sorcery or artifact. Their sorcery. So they have nine power right now. We're at 13. So a lightning bolt would only put us to one. 
Okay. There is bolt. There's another bolt. Okay, unfortunate. Um, yeah. Ooh. Ah, that would have been good. Okay, so let's just focus on getting the next one. Not the end of the world. Okay, game number three on the play. Game is lacking action, but we do have a bunch of protection spells. I don't know how I feel about it. It's crazy, but like I sort of want a mulligan this hand. I just don't know what it does well. Yeah, I'm gonna ship it. This is better. And I think we're supposed to get rid of a Chromox. So this is just gonna be a turn one exchange six for six. Okay, diamond. We will need all of our stuff to resolve for this to be good, but I think it's better than um, going to five. Ooh, I, I could have uh, imprinted there, but I, I guess this way I'm getting six cards and not five, so it's probably better. All right, relay for six. These six new ones. Pretty good so far. Protection spell? Hey. All right. Uh, well, I don't know how good the protection spell... Uh, I guess it's actually fine. Because we can use one diamond for red and then the other for the other color. For green. So this actually might end up being okay. Um, I don't know how I feel yet. It does take away peers and out if we do it that way. I think drawing a red land would actually be really good for us. Or an opal. The opponent's going to... Hey! Pretty good, pretty good. Worked out delightfully in my opinion. Uh, let's tap this for a green. Oh, I said green and I tapped it for its complement. All right, we want a green. We're going to sacrifice this for red. Right of line. We have a whole bunch of mana. <clears throat> let's try to resolve this veil. Because if veil resolves, we just have here into the abyss. This relay uh, in game three sure made up for our relays in game two. I will say that. And it resolves! Okay. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now we go and get the best card in the deck here into the mother effing abyss. Boom. Straight into the abyss. Let's draw half our deck, lose half our life. And when we do that, we get to draw Orm's Chant, which allows us to beat a card like Stifle. All right, so tap that for a white. Cast chant targeting you. Boom. Rit. A match number one over the format's menace. Blue Red Delver. The Epic Storm is 1-0. Don't go anywhere. I'm sure that we'll never lose a single match in this PTQ. We're going to go a full 12-0, calling it now. Never going to be wrong about this. See you in the future matches. All right, welcome to round number two. And we are once again on the play against Magic Online legend McWinsauce. So McWinsauce tends to play a lot of blue decks. I think this hand is actually fine. Uh, we just need an action spell. Right now we have protection and acceleration. Now we just need something to do with that mana. And I think that we're going to have a little bit of time to find it. This hand seems fine to me. So we're just going to play Polluted Delta and pass the turn. Misty Rainforest, okay. And Pond.
Okay. The ponder is resolved and they are passing. Draw. There's our action. So in theory, we could like try to do something crazy here. But that said, our hand doesn't do a whole lot. So something I could do is just go get Peer into the Abyss. And then next turn we have Peer. Um, so I'd go Lotus Petal, tap two lands. So that way we can Veil of Force. And the next turn, um, yeah, this seems fine to me. I am going to attempt the Burning Lich. Okay, let's go get Taiga now. Uh, I forgot that I had double uh, Delta. This is fine. We can just get Badlands. It's fine. We don't actually need it. We have the Veil. Uh, or the Petal for the Veil. Okay. So the problem with playing out the Petal, though, is that um, Prismatic Ending can theoretically hit it. Yep. That's a little bit annoying. I mean, I was supposed to play out the pedal because I need to protect the Burning Wish, but it is what it is. And there's another. So I can't jam right now because I can't veil into it. So we're just going to pass. Uh, any card we can imprint on Chrome Ox next turn will make it possible. Okay. Snapcast for Ponder. Good card. No! <laughs> oh, that's bad. We have to pass. Wow, Chromox. Why why you be like this sometimes? Yikes. Uh, we gave our opponent an extra turn to find their answer. Yep, they still have six cards in hand. Five cards. Okay. So, Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual's five. Yeah, we have enough to peer. I can't believe we drew a Chrome Ox on turn. <laughs> All right, let's just try to resolve peer. And it just resolves. Wow. I was not expecting that. Sort of odd. Okay. Got this for red. Play another one. Um, I guess we can play a veil here. Another right. Let's Orm's Chant for the hell of it. Okay, so that resolved. Okay, so t our opponent, McWinsauce, is going to concede. We've gotten game number one. Same board plan as round one, almost. Uh, so these, this is our blue package, for what it's worth. Or that's at least what Alex McKinley and I like to call it. And... It's just these five cards we board in almost against every single blue deck. And then you board out Ponder. Um, it's just what our what we figured out is the correct thing to do. And then you either board out Ad Nauseam versus aggressive decks like Delver, or you board out Echo versus Control decks um, like the one we're facing right now, where they're possibly going to have Narset or Hull Breachers. And this keeps Ad Nauseam in the deck. You're also taking a six man out, but then you're boarding in, you know, 13. We were taking out 10 boarding and 13. So Ad Nauseam is not free, but they don't pressure your life total, which is pretty huge. So we're just going to submit this and uh, see what we can do here. Friendly reminder, if you're looking to support this content, there's no better place to go than the epicsrim.com slash shop. And there you will find a bunch of card singles. We've been uploading more and more every week. Orms Chant. Japanese foil, Modern Horizons 2 cards, tokens, whatever. We've got your card singles. Go check them out at the Epic Storm. 
com slash shop. Okay. Game number two, match number two. We're on the draw against McWin sauce, and this seems fine. Uh, we don't have protection this time, but we do have an answer to permanent base hate like Deafening Silence or Tannin, something along those lines. Wouldn't mind a second land here. They did not shuffle. Another opal, not really ideal, if I'm being honest. So that was kind of a stinky draw. We're going to pass back now. There's Canonist. We have this Abrupt Decay. We just want to draw a land. Boom. So I'm going to Abrupt Decay this Canonist right now. And the reason why is I don't want Veil of Summer to interrupt anything I'd like to do here. So let's just get this Canonist out of here. Brainstorm. Okay, and they're just going to pass, which is sort of interesting. Um, so Wishclaw was a fine draw. I'm going to just cast the Wisher. If it gets forced, that's fine. If not, we get the Cyborg Relay. Okay, love it. Ooh, no third land. Right of Flame. Now they're stuck in a position where they're choosing if they want to force a right or not. So they could have Force of Vigor here. Um, I'm not going to imprint onto the Chromox. So if you cast Bright, you're actually in a... Or Dark Ritual... You're actually in a weird spot where you can't, I don't know, you can theoretically lose to a number of things, and I'm just trying not to do that. So, like, if you were to play that before you played out all of these, and then your opponent also had Force of Vigor, that's what I'm trying to say here. So I was, I sequenced this in a way where I couldn't lose to Force or Force of Vigor. Um, so now we play Wish Claw. We are at uh, Storm 6. So our opponent might be trying to respect us just winning the uh, tendrils. Although I don't think that's possible. Uh, because they're at 19. If they're at 18, I could hypothetically tendrils for lethal. But, I mean, maybe if they were to, like, brainstorm in response here, that would, uh, that would do it, actually. They pitch Jace the Mind Sculptor. Okay. Relay. It looks like they're all going to resolve. No copy of Fluster, which is what I was worried about. Okay, that was decent. This force is, or this Burning Wish is exiled uh, because that's what got the Galvanic Relay. So there's no action spell in here. Uh, I am a little bit concerned with that, but we're just going to have to hope that this Brainstorm does a little bit of heavy lifting. Take our draw. Another Brainstorm's pretty good. I don't think we want to just play out the other diamond into a possible... Um, Force of Vigor. So I think we want to keep that back for now. Wow. That was good. Um, is it crazy that I want to put back the other diamond here? Because, <laughs> um, like, this right makes four mana. I guess a diamond essentially makes the same amount. Okay. I talked myself into it. Go get Trop. Okay. We have Double Veil backup that our opponent knows about here. So if they were to force a bigger these diamonds, I could just sacrifice them in response. Obviously, we would lose the one in our hand. Uh, which isn't ideal by any means, but it's the proper sequencing, I think. But maybe I'm wrong. Um, I'm wrong all the time. 
So let's start off with Rite of Flame. And then let's try to resolve these veils. Okay, so our opponent could be holding open their own copy of Veil of Summer here. So what we're going to do is just go get Peer into the Abyss. And because they only have two mana available, they can't hull breacher us. And we can draw half our deck into a possible Orm's Chant. That would stop, uh, or we could just, you know, Grape Shot for a bajillion, roughly. Okay. Casting the spells. Sorry, something in my eye. Uh, play Brainstorm. Go back two lands. We found the Orm's Chant, uh, which is just delightful. Okay. Can't you? So now our opponent can't even respond. And we just go get Grip Shot. Why not? We're already here. Might as well enjoy the party. And just like that, we've won match number two. My prediction still remains true as of right now. Definitely not going to change. Uh, 2 0. Stick around. Yeah. Next one. We're back for match number three. Once again, I'm fortunate enough to be on the play. We're going to keep, or, well, hold on. I don't, I don't want to say that we're going to keep our hand. I haven't even seen it yet. But we're on the play, and we're going to keep this. <laughs> My prediction was right. Uh, yeah, so our opponent's likely playing Blue Red Delver. This hand just makes a lot of sense. We're going to ponder looking for some, you know, action, maybe a little bit of mana. And then we have double protection. Let's do it up. All right, Underground Sea into Ponda. Ponda. This seems fine. Uh, yeah, this is actually great. We get to convert this Chrome Mox into a, uh, something we actually want, which would be the Taiga, most likely. Uh, so then that way we can have access to all five colors. There's the Delver. Yep. Play out this Delta. We're going to draw a Ponder plus two unknowns. Let's get rid of these. And here I can go get Tundra and cast Ponder. Ding Dong. That's pretty good. Okay. So this might be a game, I'm not sure where we look to maybe use our opponent to build up Storm, and then, you know, maybe one from there. I'm not sure. So we know that we're drawing Tundrals next. Ooh, Double Delver. This might not be one of those games. And here it's a little bit awkward because I can't play Burning Wish with backup next turn. They shuffled. Okay. Ooh, we didn't draw the tendrils okay so that actually changes things um drawing the pedal is maybe better so let's get badland yeah i think badland is the right one and i wonder if we get peer with this We're going to have, we're short on mana next turn. I could get Echo. All right, I'm just going to grab the pier. I'm going to bank on drawing a mana. We have a couple looks, like we're not dead immediately either. All right, so another Dark Ritual will be insanely good for us. I would also take uh, Rite of Flame as well. And they flipped a lightning bolt. So that's going to knock us down to 11. The attack step will, at least. So we do have to be conscious of dying to bolt. They chose to shuffle off Ponder. So they do have the red source for the bolt here. So now we're going to 11. 
And if we don't resolve Pier this turn, okay. Um, if we don't resolve Pier this turn, we are dead to Bolt. So this is sort of a bluff because um, I can't actually pass Pier. At least right now, I can't. Okay, so it's going to put me to 8, and then these would put me to 2 next turn. Bush Claw. So Storm's 4. So I think we're supposed to just brainstorm and see what my options are. Okay, uh, so if we put back Claw here, I can... Tendrils for Lethal. Well, that worked out well. It was all bluff. Okay, and then attendees for lethal. Wow, that worked out well. Boom. Look at that mana base too, it's just beautiful. Turn four with double backup having perfect mana? Wow, how lucky. Uh, I should quit bragging so much before I lose both board games. Uh, so once again, we're bringing in the relays and the decays. Let's get rid of this Nas and these ponders. Quick, quick, quick. Hit submit. And if you need help keeping track of your storm and mana like I just did, there's nothing better than our mini token pack. You saw it in the intro, but we have 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm. That means that you can count all the way up to grape shot and we've got your back covered. We also have a pile for Galvanic Relay. We've cast Relay a bunch at this event. We have an indicator for what cards you can cast. 4 treasures for Striker Rich. And then for our vintage friends, Monk Tokens for Monastery Mentor. Then we have Slime Time Live. 8 for Genitor Ooze in all formats. And we have the power and toughness built right into the tokens. No need to fumble around with dice. Slime time has you covered, making it simple and easy to keep track of your ooze tokens. What more could you want except for 20 squirrels and 20 goblin tokens for your copies of Chatterstorm and empty the warrens? Just beautiful. Why wouldn't you want to grab one of these? They're simply delightful. Head over to theepicsroom.com shop to do that today. Okay, so we are back for game number two. Our opponents kept seven. We're going to have to ship this. These Mox Opals are just not good enough. Uh, this hand is nuts, so we're definitely keeping this. And I think, unfortunately, we're supposed to put back the Orm's Chant. Um, we just need to relay and get the maximum number of cards off it. So, unfortunately, I don't think we're allowed to keep the Orm's Chant here. All right, Volcanic into Delver. Good start. Right of Flame is a good draw. Okay, so now we just want to resolve some of these artifacts. And right was a good draw because it means that we don't have to sacrifice a Lotus Petal to cast this Galvanic Relay. Oh, uh, whoops. All right, so now we get to essentially wheel for six. R -r relay so good <laughs> all right so let's see what our relay reveals and i just talked about our epic storm mini token pack you can use that token to keep track of your cards all right we want some action here action ah uh, no tutor so that's a little bit risky All right, so maybe our draw step will give us something to do with all this. All right, surgical, that's kind of spicy. Oof. Wow. Meltdown, so good. All right, we're probably not winning now. Um, that's particularly brutal. Ouch. 
Okay, so maybe we'll get lucky and draw like Echo Vans? I don't know. Not feeling too good about this game now. Okay, let's take our draw. So there's an action spell. But we do know that our opponent has the surgical. So if we try to get another relay, well, I guess we could echo here. Um, but they would snatch all of our diamonds out of our deck. Pitching days, or yeah, pitching days. So we're going to try to veil this. We know that they still have a surgical. Oh, so they had double force too. We just weren't beating this draw. And they still have surgical in hand. Um Wow. Yeah, this was quite the opening hand from the opponent. I mean, there's not a whole lot I could have done about this, so I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. But yikes. So they have surgical and then delver. If we had one more land, we could have, uh, well, I guess that's not even true anymore. I was going to say we could have killed the Delver to buy some time, but then they just drew another. So they're probably going to exile our diamonds here, if I had a guess. Because it's our best draw still, even though we only have two. Oh, no, we drew the Echo, so we actually want the diamond here. I mean, they're just going to surgical, but I need to make this play. It's the only way we win this game, is if I take this line. They didn't do, they didn't bite, so we get to wheel here. All right, so we get to come back into the game. They still have a wish claw. They could go get something like Nolarod, not that I want to say that out loud. But uh, we are not in the clear yet. They're likely going to remove our diamonds. We're going to have our best mana acceleration removed from the deck as well. But we have a fighting shot of potentially winning this game. Okay. So I'm just going to pass here. If our opponent, you know, goes and gets... I don't know, no rot or plays a no rot or something. We can always just abrupt decay it. Okay. We're going to take four going to nine. We probably need to win uh, on our next turn. Sure. I would love if they used Wish Claw. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Yeah. So you might be thinking, like, Brian, why don't you abrupt decay something on the end step? This card could potentially imprint a Chromox, but it also goes back on Brainstorm. So I'm not really interested in uh, just throwing away a card here. Okay, so we really, I think how we win this game is that we Brainstorm into Tendrils. Um, so that's what I'm going to try to do here. So we can put back abrupt decay. And... Opal. We have a shot of winning right now. Um, I have to get a little bit lucky. We have no copies of tendrils. Or, I'm sorry, no copies of diamond. So, we're going to try to create a war over Burning Wish, and then just have to hit. You pretty much need to draw another copy of Dark Ritual. So they're going after Rhett. It's also interesting that they're still playing Spray Dragon. And if this resolves, uh, we win. So that is not the case. Uh, so now we need to Veil again. Okay, Petal's huge. Petal's actually a really good draw. Okay, so now we just need a card... That we can imprint on a Chromox and we win. That'll do. Wow. Play to our outs and we hit. 
Wow. I'm like a little bit in shock right now that we're in a position to win this game. What a game this has been. Go get the tendies. <laughs> Jeez. And our opponent concedes. I can't believe we won this. I thought for sure we were a goner in game two. But we played it out. We played smart. We put back the opal. That was a big part of this turn. We realized that we weren't supposed to abrupt decay because it was a waste of cards. Those little things added up and it resulted in a game win. How crazy is that? And now we're 3-0. So we're a third of the way through this PTQ. Just have to keep playing tight, keep making good decisions. And hopefully you enjoyed this round. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, the fourth round in a row that we are on the play. Pretty good sign. We're facing Medvedev, who almost exclusively plays Delver variants. So I would expect some blue-red shenanigans once again. Yorian? What? Are they playing d and Oh, uh, I guess we're supposed to just jam. And if I get forced, I'm going to feel really bad. But, wow. I didn't even realize that they were on uh, 80 cards when I was doing my intro. All right, let's spin that wheel. Leaving the black floating because a dark ritual would be pretty close to lethal here uh yeah so we currently have uh storm four five six seven hold on do i have lethal so uh dark ritual will be storm five another wish claw would be six lion's eye diamond would be seven activate wish claw um Sorry, I just need to think through this. So play these three out, hypothetically. That brings us to seven. Activate one brings us to eight. I could do nine storm. I'm and I'm one mana short, I believe, of just tendrils for lethal. Uh, because I, I think I'm a mana short of burning wish into tendrils. Um is that right? So activate wish claw go get a diamond and then this wish claw has to so the fact that we actually drew the ad nauseum here was pretty bad um i think i'm supposed to play dark ritual because it's going to be easier next turn to brainstorm back the ad nauseum and then just like do this line so i think it's correct here to play this out so diamond is seven once again Wish Claw would be from 8. Tendrils is 9. Yeah, I'm one short. I guess maybe I could theoretically like Burning Wish for Relay for 11. Do we think 11 cards off the top is better? Um, I don't think so. So I think I'm just going to pass here. And then next turn, like maybe try a Brainstorm line. So close. All right, Wasteland's kind of brutal here. Uh, brutal. <sighs> really don't want to lose the DNT. Opal's decent. Okay, let's uh, see what this brainstorm has in store for us. Come on, brainstorm, carry me. So we can definitely put back the Adnaz. And then... We don't want to put back Tendrils because we don't want to flip it. So let's put back right. Okay, so now we're going to get to Adnauseum with the land drop. Activate Claw for Diamond. Come on, 
You're playing DT. You don't need to pause on everything. Let's go. I feel like sometimes opponents do this sort of stuff to throw off uh, your flow, make you uh, maybe misclick or get agitated, and it's just important to keep a level head, don't get too upset, and uh, just play tight. And not. Uh... Okay, let's flip. There's no echo in our deck, no tendrils in our deck. We can actually go pretty low on this, and that's why I didn't put tendrils back. I wanted to see the maximum number of cards possible. And there's our cyborg echo. And here is our main deck echo. So I can actually keep flipping. Lotus Petal, Wish Claw. Well, we could stop at three. And we're going to take game number one over death and taxes. Which is pretty huge because. Uh, the post board, and I've talked about this in a number of videos at this point, but they get a bunch of scary cyborg cards like Deafening Silence, Mindbreak Trap, and we're going to need to be able to beat those cards. And it's just better if we have two opportunities to do that rather than one. All right, so get that chicken tendies and target them. All right, so we got game number one over death and taxes. And for once, we are not going to be boarding in Galvanic Relay. That is not a card we want here. We do board out Ponder again. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we board out Veil of Summer again. I guess we haven't boarded out Veil yet, but we do board out one Ponder. Like, that is the correct thing. I just clicked too many. It was too focused on talking and not doing the right thing. But this is how we board. It might seem weird, but with Mindbreak Trap, you definitely want Ornum's Chant to shut that off. So I wouldn't recommend boarding out the Chants. I think that's probably a fairly big mistake. And that's how we board for Death and Taxes. Our first non-blue deck of the day. That was a turn three ad nauseum into Tendrils of Agony out of the sideboard. Entering that into my spreadsheet. If you need help approaching matchups, I would highly recommend a tutoring session. I've been doing a bunch of them recently for a variety of different players of all archetypes looking to get into playing five color, the Epic storm. If you're interested, definitely sign up. I think it's worthwhile and I'm sure that you'll love it. Okay. Game two, we're on the draw and we have access to burning wish into massacre. That said, I don't know if I love this hand. Um, just kind of slow. I think I'm going to ship this. Much better. Much, much, much better. Um, yeah. Go to the right. So what this hand needs is something like a prismatic ending or a deafening silence. But it's definitely better. Or uh, I said deafening silence. I jinxed it. Uh, abrupt decay or prismatic ending. Okay, now we just have to pass. We do not have an ending in the board to get with this Burning Wish. I boarded them all in to increase our odds of drawing into uh, good cards. So instead, we're probably just going to jam this Wish Claw and, you know, do what we can do. We got Call Draw. Okay. Answer to Deafening Silence? Nope. So, hmm. I think we want to get taiga scrub so scrub and then taiga off of the and then we can play wish claw and if our opponent can't interact with our lands or our claw we can potentially try to win next turn maybe not uh because we have to tap taiga to activate and then scrub land is uh how we cast ending but then we don't have another starting mana. So maybe uh, that was a little premature. Peace land. That hurt. Hmm. So next turn we're taking six, going to seven. 
If we draw another zero mana artifact, that's actually not that bad. The Wasteland certainly hurt, though, or else we could have done something this turn. What do you have, opponent? Age, so that it shuts off Echoes Align. So, I get to brainstorm on the opponent's turn and see what our options are. So right now they're going to put us to one. So fetch lands are shut off at this point. No other threats. That's sort of interesting. Then again, they are on two lands. We found abrupt decay. That's interesting. So we don't need to wish claw for an answer to deafening silence anymore. Okay, so how do we want to handle this? I think we maybe want to destroy this in the upkeep and then use Wishclaw to potentially draw into something new because I don't want either of those cards. So now I can Wishclaw, but I think we're going to have to draw an initial mana source. Like, we're probably not winning this game, if we're being realistic. Can we get, like, a Lotus Petal here? The Cage is actually pretty good for them, because it shuts off Echo. I think we're just supposed to get a Petal. Unfortunately, Tundra is uh, one of the few lands here that doesn't help us. I guess I could chant kicker them in the upkeep. What if this is a little bit of a greedy line? What if I let them activate claw? Um, yeah, I'm going to let them. Uh, they could get a wasteland off the claw. And now we're going to Chant Kicker them. So now they can't attack. They could use Claw for Wasteland. They chose not to. We're at 1, so Pier is also shut off. Okay. Uh, we've officially uh, lost game 2. We had some fight in us, though. But, like, that was an interesting game. Let's just focus on getting the third one now. I am going to resubmit. I think we're already properly boarded. Okay. On the play. So we have a hypothetical um, answer to Deafening Silence in Abrupt Decay. But we'd have to... So if you were to keep this hand, you would imprint Brainstorm and Ponder looking for Diamond. I think that this hand is just too risky. I'm going to ship this back. And this is actually a turn one. Um, wow. So this is a turn one that can answer Deafening Silence. But we would need them to not Mind Break our Wish Claw. I mean, for a six, this is as good as it gets. We, we, okay, so that resolved. So now what we can do is we can pass, and next turn, hypothetically, let's say our opponent plays Deafening Silence. I have the ending for it, and then Ad Nauseam is actually spell number two. Okay. So how we lose this game is by drawing Ad Nauseam. So I'm just going to do this in our upkeep. No need to tap the opal, because the way that it works is we'd have mana floating, and I can always just use this opal later. Okay, so we want to see a bunch of zeros here. Echo is a bad flip. All right, so now we die to our own tendrils. Um, and there's still no orms chant. 
So we could die to mind break as well. I think I have to flip. Really nervous. Now we're at two. Yeah, unfortunately, I just didn't reveal any other artifacts. So I'm going to have to take a draw here. Yikes. Another right of flame. Okay, so we can go to one. Like, in theory, I could also just, like, uh, brainstorm looking for another artifact. Is that better? So we would go right, 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 which is seven mana, into Burning Wish into Empty. So we're taking away a guaranteed empty line. Then we could flashback Echo after. Sorry, this is just very difficult. I think I'm going to brainstorm. Because the empties will get hit by my break. And from there... Okay, so we hit Chromox. That was a really good... Um, okay. So now we can tap this for red. Actually, do I even want to do that? Let's just imprint the decay. Right. So sorry that I took a long time on this, but wow. Like, there's a lot of micro decisions here that mattered a lot. Seems weird that they're tanking on the mana now. And I say, like, I'm down seven minutes, I'm saying tanking, but I think that you would have wanted to hit an earlier piece of mana if you were to mind break um, the Rite of Flame. So they might be thinking about Surgical, but if they had Surgical, they should have used it on Lion's Eye Diamond in our draw step. <coughs> Excuse me. Very macabre. Okay, that's, like, pretty free to do. Like, that's fair. Does Dark Ritual resolve? So assuming that Dark Ritual resolves, we go up to 7. I'm sorry, we go up to 8, and then Dark Ritual would bring us up to 10. And if you think about how this game would work, is we can then go Burning Wish for Empty, Burning Wish for Tendrils. And we have enough mana to do all of that. And we could even Flashback Echo. Okay, so they've decided that Dark Ritual is allowed to resolve. You're gonna let one resolve, you should probably let the other go. Alright, so burning wash. Now we can empty for lethal. It's important that we left two black floating because we're about to burning wish for uh tendrils and sacrifice the diamond for blue. So if they uh I guess they could mind break the tendrils, I guess. They're going to let Tendrils resolve. Or, I'm sorry, Empty resolve. Okay. And now we want to Burning Wish. Add three blue. And we're going to cast Tendrils. I think that this is probably going to get hit by mind break and now they're going to concede okay so we got lucky i think we got very very lucky to win this game i'm not going to uh try and pretend this was all skill but it looks like i pressed the right buttons by choosing to cast brainstorm uh into this chrome box that allowed us to have two uh storm herds that beat mind break we also took a line where i could have just jammed ad nauseum on turn one and if we had done that we would have lost a mind break on the spot. We even had backup prismatic ending for deafening silence. We had it covered. Um, so that was sort of exciting. And we're advancing to 4 0. Almost halfway there. Let's see what more we can do. Round five. We're on the dragon's Baron of Bacon. Being on the draw is crazy. And look at this garbage we've opened. We're going to ship this. According to Goldfish, our opponent's been playing a lot of Delver. So hopefully. You know, we get it. I don't know. 
but it looks like we're going to five. We unfortunately cannot keep this hand. Opposite problems between our seven and our six. Mulligan. Okay, uh, so we can get rid of these and hope to draw Lotus Petal. Like, this is a pretty good five. There's the monkey. Okay, that was a good draw. So now we want to draw a Dark Ritual or a Lion's Eye Diamond next turn for a protected turn two win. Okay. Old Ragavan. Brainstorm. I mean, that's good for them. Ooh, and they have uh, Dragon Rage to help set up. Yeah. Really looking for a Dark Ritual or a Diamond. That's what I want. So six hits out of 53 cards. Not super probable. I would also just take Echo of Aeons. That would be lovely. Okay. Draw. Hmm. So I think I'm just going to try to get them to force the claw. I mean, it would be pretty lucky, but we could, um, like, hypothetically, if they force this, we veil. We could draw a petal or an opal that would allow us to add Nas with the right. So that worked. Let's just try to veil here. Okay. Go get Taiga. And Veilison. We can pay for days. Okay, they're going to fetch. Oh, they just had double force? Wow. Insane. So now we want to draw... Burning Lish? I mean, I'd also just take another Wish Claw, but... Ah! Stupid Monkey. They have one card in hand. That doesn't do anything. Unfortunately, we have to pass. So, Bolt... Uh, instant land artifact. So still not delirious. So we're going to take three here, going to eight. Draw. We could echo now. Um, I think that's probably our best shot. If we pass... They could search for Bolt next turn, trying to get Delirium, and then they have exact lethal. But I think we're supposed to just echo and pray. So get echo. And, you know, cross her fingers from four. Mana tendrils, that's what I want. All mana and tendrils. Okay. Um, this could be lethal if our opponent doesn't have anything. This gets trop. Please resolve. Please. They're going to force. I should turn off that auto yield because they're getting, I mean, they capped it, but they're getting equity out of it when I could respond. Don't double force me twice in one game, please. 
Okay, so that's actually going to shut off tendrils. We're going to have to pay for this days and pray that we draw a mana off the veil. Another days. All right, um, track for black. We're just going to have to hit off the veil. Okay, now they're bolting us. Okay, let's draw lines at diamond. Come on. Wow. All right. Um, we just have to pass. We're dead. Uh, it's worth noting that our opponent just has lethal. So they have to activate Wish Claw. Yep. Okay. Now they just have to attack. Sorry, someone's knocking at my door. Um, I will be right back. Sorry about that. All right, so we have to board for Delver. It's the same board plan that we've had so far. Board in Relay. And then board out uh, the same stuff. So we're going to take out Adnaz here. And just hope to get these post-board games. I mean, that was a pretty good game for us mulliganing to five for what it's worth. It took double force uh, initially to stop us. And then it took our opponent having force for days, days um, in the end. Because if they didn't have the second days, we could have cast Brainstorm off the Opal looking to hit off that. So we had some outs there. Unfortunately, we just didn't hit. Them. On the play for game number two. Hmm. I don't love double Chrome Mox, but I think this hand has the potential to be fine with the Brainstorm. Like maybe fetch away one of these on turn two. Right, we're going to main face this Brainstorm to avoid Daze, but also Pyroblast. So let's cast Brainstorm. Yikes. Okay, so we're going to put these back. And turn two, maybe play Wish Claw with Veil back up. We likely need to. Maybe I don't need to. I'll have to think about it. Um, like, I could imprint onto the Chromox, or I can keep Chromox back. I think I don't want to imprint. We we do get hurt by force days here, but like force pitch force, okay. We're gonna veil. We drew the chromox. That means that they don't have days. Right now we don't have ad nauseum in our deck, so we can't ad nauseum next turn. Worth noting. They put a Dragonry Channeler to the graveyard. Another Channeler. They're on four. So this is going to give them Delirium. This is oddly a... But like, normally you're not in these situations where you want to add Nauseam versus Delver. But this is a situation where it would be ideal. Let's see what our fresh draw step is. Down to two cards. Oh. Fail. Uh, I think, unfortunately, we just have to pass here. If we could draw another Wish Claw or a Lion's Eye Diamond, we could uh, Echo. And theoretically, I could cycle Veil here, but they're getting a lot of looks between the Dragon Rage Channeler and this iteration for another Force, and I, I just think that's a little bit aggressive. I guess if we drew Burning Wish, we could theoretically echo as well. Hmm. Wouldn't be protected, but... We know that they have a Bolt. Do I think that their last two cards are Force Blue card? Because, like, now I'm wondering if I should cycle this Veil. Oh, they, they still have three? Oh, because that wasn't in their hand. Never mind. So with three cards, I'm not going to cycle that. Draw.
from dead to a dash dragavan or another bolt. We put one on top. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do here. So I can like ritual, I could like hard cast echo, but like that's not very good. Um, I think I'm just supposed to pass. I can't get to storm eight. So now we just go to two and we're dead to a burn spell. But I mean, I'm aware I, I chose this line. I think that it's slightly better. All right, come on deck, please be good to me. All right, that gives me something. We, we stand a shot. I need them to let this ritual go. This is from four, five, six, seven. So right now we're one storm short, so we really want them to interact with us. So I'm going to hide the veil for now. So if this veil resolves, we echo. And if it gets countered, we have 10. The problem with echoing is that they left in bolts, so I'm just dead if they draw bolts. We're a mana short of Burning Wish into tentacles. Okay, so that gives us Lethal Storm. We're dead to Double Days, uh, Spell Pierce, Luster. But we can't play around those things, so we're just going to do what we can. Wow, we got it. Okay, game number three. I feel like I got away with one there. And I'm just going to submit the same 75. This is the game plan. No need to deviate. We've got it from here. Just play tight, make good decisions, and uh, a, the variants gods Kronos, Kronos, the god of storms be in our favor i have a japanese foil Kronos, god of storms thanks to my good friend marshall arthurs marshall gave me a super good discount on it because marshall felt like i should own the god of storms so uh i appreciate you it is uh on the first page of my storm binder so i'll have to get it signed All right, Baron of Bacon. Game three, we're playing for 5-0 in this Pro Tour qualifier. And this hand is hot trash. we got to ship it. This hand is pretty good. Uh, so we're going to bottom Chromox here. One of our better draws would actually be, like, right of Flame. Uh, Mox Opal would be good. Lotus Petal. There's old rags. Pretty good draw. Veil is eh, um, because we can't actually do a whole lot with it. I guess if we drew like a lotus petal or an opal, we'd have something. Push claw. Dragon rage. Are you going to play claw? Third all out combo. Okay, so they still have four cards. And I'm just going to play these and pass. I don't think I'm supposed to like expose myself to Wasteland here. We're on five. Right of Flame. I actually would have liked that. That would have been an insane draw because we'd have Burning Wish with double backup. Over. They're on three cards now. Okay. Draw. chance you so if they fight here i will veil um because i don't think i'm going for it this turn anyway and i want to hide my red source so i'm not exposing uh the verdant catacombs getting uh taiga yet relay And I wanted to cast Veil there to convert it into another card, but I don't actually want to cast Relay. We kept the card on top. 
So something I could do would be to cycle Veil, but I don't think that's actually good. So the issue here is that they're going to waste Trot most likely, and then next turn I can't have Burning Wish plus Veil. They reveal Bolt. Am I dead here? I go to 10. All right, well, they're not going to use Bolt, apparently. Or they'll use it now for some reason. Sure. So not Delirium. They have seven. Okay, so I'm going to go to three. Oh, I would have loved that opal. That opal would have been such a good draw. That's a heartbreaker. Okay. Interesting. So they left me with the green source for Veil. Come on, Doc. Be good to me. So once again, I'm putting myself dead to Lightning Bolt. All right, so we're going to echo and just hope that they don't draw bowl. I mean, that's the only thing I can do here. I don't like this pause. I knew it. Ah, I messed up. So what I should have done there is I should have um, played Burning Wish for Echo and then played my diamonds. Because now I just got punished. Misplay. Now I need like an Ultra Miracle to win this. Come on, Perfect Seven. Um. Please don't have it. 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 This pause is killing me. Yes! 5-0 over Delver. Crazy. Whew. That was an insane uh, game, insane match. These matches today have just been bonkers. Uh, we are now over halfway through this event. Let's just keep playing tight and getting lucky. Uh, that's what happened right there, so... Whew. Yeah. Hey there, round number six. We're on the draw against Skew P, and their goldfish history has a bunch of Delver, so we're going to keep this... Delver everywhere, and uh, we just need to draw an action spell. What I would do for a Burning Wish off the top rope. Turn one chant into goblins? Sign me up. I sort of miss the Black Belcher day sometimes where you just dress into 14 goblins and like tell your opponent what's up. But uh, that's not what the Epic Storm does anymore, if you're unfamiliar. Uh, we're definitely not the, the goblin deck as often, but I would love to be right here. That's for sure. Okay. Opponent has mulligan to five. Oh, no. That is not what I want. I mean, our hand is still good against oops, but we're on the draw. Oh, no. Please pass. Okay, they passed. This is a miserable matchup for us. Wow. We do have the chant. So uh, we can chant them with Veil backup to get them to deck themselves, but this is not what we wanted to keep. If we can win game one, that's huge uh, because we would get to be on the play for game three, assuming that they just goldfish me on turn two, or turn one in game two. But we need to get this one. And chant being chant and not defense grid is very huge in this matchup. Okay, we just have to pass. Okay. So... Veil of Summer is actually pretty good at protecting the arms chant because a lot of these oops decks do play Pact and Negation. Wow, from Delver to oops, I was I would not have expected that. 
Yep. All ritual. Battle. Yep. That's an informer. Chant targeting you. So if they packed here, we have Veil. All right, so we've gotten game number one over Oops All Spells. I'm not feeling good about this. This is not a matchup that I want to be playing. I'm pretty nervous right now, um, but I think we're supposed to not sideboard. The Veils protect Chant, like I mentioned. So we just want to, you know... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, when? Sorry, I just ate lunch and little leftover burrito coming back up please forgive me disgusting absolutely effing disgust uh but yeah if you're looking to support us once again the epicstorm.com slash shop that's where you go for your own storm swag don't forget it okay so we're back and our opponent is mulliganed this is you know not that great um so we can imprint the burning wish and cast right of flame on turn one but this hand doesn't actually do anything so i think we're like normally i'd love to keep this hand but here i just don't think it's good enough we have champ but we can't cast any of these cards so we're gonna have to go to five unfortunate our opponents kept six so we're probably just dead um let's just keep these i suppose all right what okay Let's see what we can do here under shuffle those we really just didn't want to find chant Adnos isn't bad, um, but we're now down to a mulligan to four essentially because we burned two lotus petals. So once again, we want to find chant off this ponder. All right, we'll keep this, and this is an ad nauseum next turn. So if our opponent decides to play around chant and gives us another turn, we actually just have a turn two. Okay. They're going for it, unfortunately. Belcher? And they're passing? No way. <clears throat> wow. Ednaz? Okay, that's good. So there was a, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, two cards under their hand that would beat me here. If they had Pact of Negation and then a Spirit Guide. So they could Pact the Ad Nauseum and then in their upkeep with the Pact Trigger killing them on the stack, they could activate Belcher. But now we just need to flip some good cards. Okay. And that should do it. Scrubland, Taiga, Veil. We're going to stop at six because we don't want to flip Echo. I can't believe we're going to be oops all spells here. Wow. Transformational cyborg package into Belcher. The mental game that Chant must have done here. Um, I suppose it could be like ESG fail. But I think we could even beat that. brainstorm and now we can also grape shot i mean we could have before i suppose uh let's just tendies target them it looks like they're gonna going to resolve so even if they had veil they would be dead here can't believe we got this game how lucky. We're 6-0. This event's eight rounds. 
not counting our chickens by any means. Still got a lot of magic left to play, but we're doing well. Uh, let's just keep up, keep playing tight, that thing. Let's not get too excited. Just got to play magic. Round number seven, and we are facing our fourth blue-red Delver opponent on the day. We're on the play. We're just going to try to make a decisions and uh, win. Can't ship this. This is a keep. All right, so we're looking for another mana source off this brainstorm, but also protection. Brainstorm. Okay. Um, so we didn't hit protection, but we did hit this burning wish. So that means that on turn two, we can um, cast ad nauseum with the, or cast burning wish with a bunch of mana floating. Basically, we're going to try to double spell. All right, Falco Lombardi. Bobble. Okay, so now they're going to know that I have a Burning Wish on top. Okay. Petal. Red Flame. Red Flame. Dark Ritual. Diamond. Burning Wish. They know that I have it. Well, do you have another force? And I'm going to add three block here. Please resolve. Please resolve. Please resolve. No! Double force! Uh, why, why are you like this, world? Why? Uh. All right, let's just go to game two. I'm not gonna drag that one out. We're not coming back from that. Ah, oh. heartbreaking. Okay, same plan. <laughs> uh, pull out the spreadsheet real quick while I wait. All right, on the play for game number two. And needs mana. I guess we keep this. I don't love this hand. All right. Brainstorm. Okay. I'd wish on top again. It, it doesn't matter. I could have put a land there. So now if they bobble me, they'll see Wish. But I plan on casting Wish on the second turn anyway. Maybe not now. Just pass, hold out, then this uh, Abrupt Decay. And then on the following turn, I can Burning Wish and pay for days. And looks like they're just going to play conservatively. They likely have a bunch of interaction in hand. Okay, so we will not be able to protect this Burning Wish with Veil. That said, I'm not even sure if I'd want to. Right, burning Wish. Brainstorm, okay, that resolves. Wish. Good deal. I think I'm supposed to get a relay here. Okay. Bobble. Next turn, assuming that we draw something that doesn't work well with relay, I think, ooh. Okay, so now they're getting our top card. That was a good turn for them. Hitting the green source really hurts. Because now I can't decay, I can't relay. Yeah, I just have to pass here. Yep, that damned little monkey. In theory, you could like kick chant, but I don't think that's the best use of the card. We need that to be protected. I didn't want to draw a veil, so that's fine. 
events iteration honestly i think i'd love to draw a brainstorm channeler okay yep draw so it is another red source I think I just need to probably kill the channeler. This relay ended up not being very good. I mean, I could just go Dark Ritual. Hmm. Oh, I can't kill it. Uh, never mind. That's I, I can't take that line. Sorry. This is this is not a taiga. Um. So I think I want to cast this and then get Echo or Peer. I could also just go get Ponder. I don't think Ponder is what I want here. The problem with Peer is that I'm so far away. Next turn they're attacking for five. And it's just gonna get like eaten alive by days. But the problem with getting Echo, I guess I could theoretically hurt cast Echo slightly easier. Is like, I really want to draw a diamond for this Echo to be effective, but you never know if you're going to. The problem with drawing Peer is that you're two mana away from Chant into Peer, and assuming that Chant gets countered, you're eating it to daze. So I'm not sure like what the actual right line is. Here we're taking five and going to nine. Sculling Tarn. Another Wasteland. So brutal. And they're one short of lethal next turn now. I think I just need to make them force this chant. Ooh, they mill the bolt. So that could have killed us. This is definitely a, one of the few times where I felt like my mana really held me back, um, being five color. Okay. Wait. They're getting a lot of looks right now. And pass. So, I mean, that veil did mill. I mean, it forced them to use a brainstorm two dazes, but we could still just be dead here. Now they're just looking for another bolt. I think our best draw is still brainstorm into green source plus LED. We're going to three now. And that's the match. So we've taken our first match loss in round number seven. Not a big deal. It is what it is. There's still one round left to play. Let's just try to play tight and get that one. So stick around. Let's see how we do. All right. This is not the matchup I wanted for my win and in. I am facing Ethan Formula Chea, a very good friend who is on Doomsday. Doomsday is almost unwinnable for us. So it's going to be really tough for us to win this. And unfortunately, I don't think that this is a keep. So we're going to ship that. Sure. Um, sure to the Chrome. I just I, I feel a little hopeless. Like Doomsday is just such a bad matchup. It really takes them messing up in order for us to win. And Ethan's so good that's not going to happen. Under. Those aren't very. Ship that. All right. I just dead Ethan. Looks like I might be. Hey. Forty eight cards into the revealed zone. One force, two force, 
three four so ethan has a force in hand uh and we're dead so you just uh preordain in a brainstorm and then brainstorm into a cycle pile yep so ethan turn one does doomsday is just like particularly uh good against us because like not only can they turn one like you're seeing here but they also get to run four force of will four days discard spells and then in post board games they get force of negation so it just never mattered uh we just get crushed yeah and game two we don't even board we just resubmit and uh pray for better draws i guess okay on the play for game number two Am I supposed to keep this? I mean, maybe this is fine, but like I think that we're probably just dead anyway. And I will imprint the brainstorm and cast ponder. Looking for Echo of Aeons here. It's only a one of. I don't think we can afford to keep that. I'm gonna shuffle. Okay. And if Ethan plays smart, this orange chant will likely not matter for disrupting Ethan. Doomsday. I wonder if Ethan has another turn one. 48 cards. Person negations. And it looks like Ethan's just passing, which means that this chant's not going to be good enough. Draw. We just have to pass. One force of will, two force of will. So Ethan has double fours. It just doesn't matter what we do here. So now Oracle just wins. Yep. And that'll do. So we got crushed. Pretty simple. Ethan even had double force backup. So casting this in response to the fetch line didn't matter. Um, so it's worth noting, we were third coming in. We were top of the X2s. And the way that the bracket works is there will be one X2 that makes it. I don't know if it will be me. Probably not, but we'll find out. And if you see another round, that means I made it. So hopefully you do. But if not, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry that uh, we sort of uh, crashed and burned at the end, but we'll see if I get lucky. We are so lucky. Eighth play is coming in. We're on the play. And wow, we're facing Blue Red Delver once again. The format's Menace. Let's see what we can do. Sure. I'll take the double action spell Veil Hand. We do need a Black Source for these Wish Claws, but I think it's a keep. When it's gone to five cards. We're just going to lead off on Tundra. It's the land that we care about the least if it gets hit by Wasteland. Volcanic Island into Delver. Classic. Okay. Black Source. Ding. I think I'm going to Jam Claw here. Just thinking about the lands that I want to use. Yeah. Okay, so Claw Resolves, that's good. Next turn we can play another Claw. All right, Delver. No Flip is good. No Wasteland, I like that. Dragon Rage. And a Ponder. I build a Wasteland. Okay, that's good for me. We're on two cards. Did not shuffle. Okay. We're taking one here. Lines at diamond. Okay. Uh, so we're going to play claw out. And then next turn have an ad nauseum. Or an echo. Uh, that's also a possibility. 
We could echo this turn, but we don't have a whole lot of mana. We have to give them double claw. So I think it's a pretty easy way of losing the game. I think it's just better to untap here. All right, Delver didn't flip. And now Surveil. This is going to give Delver Delirium. Or, I'm sorry, Dragon Reach Channel or Delirium. This is not my first PTQ top eight that I have faced BMJ in the semi quarter or quarterfinals, I should say. Um, my first weekend playing Magic Online, I signed up for a modern PTQ. And I didn't realize that it was a PTQ. I thought there was just these giant events every weekend. And I faced BMJ and they beat me in top eight on uh, Grixis Shadow. Okay, so we lost our Taiga. We can still cast Veil off these petals. But right now I'm not super confident in Ad Nauseam. Because it's essentially from 11 because we have to respect Bolt here. Take our draw. Veil of Summer. Force Pitch Ponder. So I could fight over this. I'm not going to. And instead, I think we just try to resolve Ad Nauseam. Get Trop. So we do lose the days here. Do I really want to do that? Or should I just echo? I guess both lines require getting diamond. It's that nothing with a Chrome Max trigger versus they haven't seen a daze yet and they're a quarter of the way through their deck. Or it's ad nauseum with two or echo with two mana up. And I've already played a land. Alright, I'm gonna hate myself here and I'm going to attempt to cast ad nauseum, I think. I don't feel good about this. Yep. All right, so we lost game number one. All right. I'm gonna try something a little bit different. In between rounds, I was researching Dalverless and a bunch of them aren't on Norad anymore. So I'm not going to board out all copies of Ponder. I'm going to only board out two and try this. Because a few of those mulligans against the Dalver decks where I had Abrupt Decay, the hands would have been much better if I had Ponder. So I'm going to try this out and just hope that I don't get punished. Okay, game two and we're on the play. This hand's not keepable. This hand is. So I think we're supposed to put back the Scrubland. And then just try to relay for a bunch on turn one. Okay. Pedal. Pedal. Opal. And now we want to find another zero off this. Ding. Okay, and now we relay for six. Come on, force it, please. Uh, I guess we could see. All right, six cards off relay. Let's go. Please be good to me. Please be good to me. Uh, could have been worse, I suppose. Wasteland hurts. See what we can do here. Draw. Hmm. So I think I want to play Wish Claw. See if they'll bite on this. So I could try to echo right now. Yeah, that wasteland was so brutal. Okay, this is where I just lose uh, one of their millions of forces. All right, so we're going to echo. Yep. 
I did what I could. All right. There just wasn't a whole lot I could have done there. They just kept the hand that was all forces. A diamond off the top would be good. I don't mind that. Yeah, they just, they just kept the hand that was all forces. Forces and wastelands. Okay. We're going to have to just get lucky to win this. Before they can pyroblast it, I suppose. It's usually better to sit on this stuff, but I don't think we have much of a choice. Next turn, we can play Burning Wish. Channeler. Third Force. That one resolved. Okay. I don't even know what you would get here. Yes, Echo. So our opponent on their turn could activate Wishclaw for Meltdown, and that would just be such a blowout. Looks like they're not interested in doing that, though. We have the fourth copy of Lotus Petal on top of our deck. No attack, no land drop. So I can hard cast Echo here, but we lose our petals. Which turns off Opal, and I just get dazed. So they've pitched one daze to force. But I think they're pretty likely to just have another. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, like I just feel like I'm playing a little bit of a lost cause right now. Like I just have to pray that this resolves, I think. And at least if we do it now, I'm not getting hit by Pyroblast. Yep. Okay. Mine's that diamond. That was not the right artifact. Not gonna work. Okay. We're going to 11 now. Interesting. So they're holding open Pyro. That's the only reason they wouldn't have cast Ponder there. So now we go to six. And then next turn they'll have Wishclaw for Bolt. Draw. I mean, that was our best draw. So now if we can convert this Brainstorm into um, a protection spell, that might give us a chance. So if I Burning Wish and they just let it resolve, it puts me in a weird spot. Um, so I think I'm supposed to just accept losing to Pyroblast and cast it. And here it is. Yep. Okay. So that ends my event. Really good start, followed by uh, a train wreck at the end, unfortunately. But 6-3 is still decent. We made top 8. Unfortunately, I couldn't close, but it happens. Thank you for watching. Keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.